It's still early when Leroy Miner heads into the poverty-stricken districts of Nairobi to deliver fresh produce. It's pouring with rain, which is unusual at this time of year. But climate change is affecting Kenya's normal weather patterns. Leroy gets around on a solar-powered cargo e-bike. A uh, full battery charge uh, on such a day, it can do you a good 60 kilometers. And uh, if on a solar, uh, like a, sun day, a sunny day, a uh, full battery charge can take you up to 100 kilometers. So the panel gives you an extra range when it's sunny. The bike can reach a speed of 40 kilometers an hour, even when it's carrying a heavy load. The solar panel on the roof protects Leroy from the rain, and the battery keeps charging even in this kind of weather. Leroy works for a local company called Kwanza Tukula. It supplies pre-prepared staple foods to street food vendors in mostly impoverished neighborhoods, using sustainable sources of renewable energy. We want to be sustainable, that's the number one driver, but also we want to be economically sustainable so that we're able to produce products that are affordable for our customers who are mainly the poor. And in order to do that, we find it more efficient to use green energy. The solar bikes that we use, um, we don't pay any fuel for them and they're able to carry more cargo compared to a motorbike. The electric cargo bike was developed by the startup Solar eCycles. Its general manager is confident that affordable solar-powered electric vehicles have a future in Africa. Sustainable mobility is wonderful because it's, one, it's good for the environment, uh, especially in Kenya and in Africa where our population will grow massively over the next 20 to 30 years. So the environmental case is a very strong case that we always have to make. The number of vehicles driving on gasoline or diesel is on the rise in African cities, worsening air pollution and increasing carbon emissions. The United Nations Environment Programme, UNEP, is therefore promoting electromobility in Africa and also in Asia. It's working on the introduction of electric two- and three-wheelers. In Kenya, the biggest emission when it comes to climate change is the transport sector. And the biggest polluter when it comes to health is the transport sector. And within the transport sector, these old dirty motorcycles are one of the biggest polluters. So we want to replace them completely with zero emissions electric motorcycles like this one. In Kenya, some 80% of the electricity in the country derives from renewables, such as solar and wind power and geothermal energy. Ideal conditions for e-mobility, and yet there are just 300 electric mopeds on the busy streets of the Kenyan capital. The main obstacle to e-mobility in Kenya is inadequate infrastructure. And for car drivers, the battery range is too limited. Plus, there are hardly any charging stations. For electric cars to be mainstream, people say we need chargers, we need fast chargers. But for fast chargers to be established, we need electric cars. So there must be, you mu there must be that group of people that's willing to take the fast risk. Kenyan company Knights Energy sells imported electric cars and also installs solar charging stations. The battery range of 100 kilometers is enough to get around Nairobi. Longer journeys in rural areas would be another matter. There is demand for electric vehicles, in conservation areas, for example, and wildlife reserves such as Old Pajeta, four hours north of Nairobi. This Land Cruiser used to be gas-driven, but it's been retrofitted with a super-quiet electric engine, a major advantage here in the savannah. What I like about it is the silence. When you're driving, um, close to the animals. Animals don't um, hear it, so they don't get disturbed. You can approach the animals and you can stop, feel the animal or observe the animals. You move without starting, unlike the other vehicle which uses fuel, you have to turn the engine on, turn off, and that disturbs the animals. This safari jeep was converted by Swedish company Opibus. 
The company has set up shop in Kenya with 40 employees and installs electric engines in cars and motorbikes and soon buses too. Electromobility has benefits not only for the environment, but also for the economy here in Kenya, according to Opibus co-founder Philip Lovstrom. Going forward, we will go more and more towards, um, towards manufacturing of uh, a deeper and deeper level, which means that we can make Kenya into the actual uh, central hub for electric vehicles of this region and we can move away from importing these vehicles. Uh, having the vehicles manufactured here makes sure that we can have an easier way of accepting the vehicles. That means that we can have a bigger spread of these vehicles and that means that we faster can have a sustainable transport system. For the time being at least though, electric vehicles remain something of a niche market in Kenya. A lot of ground will have to be covered before they go mainstream and the air quality in Nairobi improves.